I'm just going to I'm going to talk more about the impact side and then where this leads and, and the purpose of this, because uh, at the end of the day, that's what we all want to see. And that's exactly what Harris uh, was talking about earlier on. Um, so, you know, just on a very small level, the impact of this script uh, was to basically take uh, what was a 30 minute per case process in gastroenterology m &Ms. We had a backlog of about 24 months of discussion of people who died. Uh, and using this tool and various other, and various situations of it, we were able to shorten the process of um, sort of aggregating the data for the dis m and discussions from about 30 minutes down to basically 15, 10 minutes per case. And that's because a lot of the time is spent information gathering. Gathering, I'm sure people like Mark and, and other clinicians on the call will know this. You know that actually all the time is spent just getting the information out. Uh, and so the, the time saving is there, and that's a huge boon to clinicians. And then we shouldn't be spending hours trawling through notes, getting getting information out. It's miserable. It's pointless, and it's not. I know it's not something which uh, which benefits anyone. Uh, so that's where this this tool came in, um, and and it's it's managed to mean that we now have caught up. We're only a few months behind now, you know, and this this process has taken only six months or so to catch up, whereas it would have taken ages, uh, ages and ages, years probably. OK, so I'm now going to talk about the GIB prevention, which is another project which we're presenting at a national meeting in um, in June. So GI bleed, and I'm not going to uh, sort of go too much into the process, but basically if you have a gastrointestinal bleed, I'm a gastroenterologist, you know, people will be admitted in hospital. Uh, they will come into A&E. They will be assessed. They will normally have some kind of resuscitation. So typically that would be fluid um, and uh, an oxygen possibly. Uh, then there'll be risk scored. So there's a risk, there are well classified uh, risk forming systems and decided whether or not they have a scope within 24 hours, two hours or more than 24 hours. Those are the main categories. Then they'll go and have that endoscopy. Someone like me will be called in the middle of the night to come and do the endoscopy. We'll do the procedure, then they'll have post-procedure care. And the bit that we're interested in really is the post-procedure care. It's the bit that happens afterwards because that's the bit that makes the most, probably the most difference because all the other bits are fairly well uh, you know that's fairly well um, mechanized within the system the bits afterwards however are not uh, and there's increasing evidence coming out now that having a specialized unit as we have for stroke or as we have for for instance um, something like uh, uh, MIs heart attacks and having specialized units improves outcomes the evidence is really 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 clear um, and so we developed a specialized unit in our hospital which we call GIBLU which is stands for GI bleed and liver unit and the, the idea was to build a footprint within the hospital with very highly skilled nurses who had extra time, higher nursing to staff ratio with extra training and also extra monitoring and things like that so that we could try and improve outcomes. And what I, I came in later on, after, I wasn't involved in the setup of this. I came in, I was only appointed, you know, sort of 12, 18 months ago. Uh, I came in later on as the, the analyst to try and help uh, sort of substantiate is this working or not because these things will be deployed in a hospital on a trial basis and then we want to know is, is it working is it not working uh, and I, what i want to do is share this as an example of how you can use python code as a clinician to get that data to prove the benefit and then to continue the change which is exactly what happened here so and, and because we've got that data we can then see has care improved and then we can look back and then prove it with python and then what happens is managers go this is really good conferences go this is great we want this and everyone wins and it, and it and it takes less time and i'll show you why it takes less time in a bit so what i'm not going to do is i'm not going to go through all the code like michael did because i think um it, people will um probably struggle but i just want to show show you how simple it is once you've developed a github repo to pull it down because most people probably don't know that so this is vs code it's an open source uh, and a completely um it's a free uh id or programming environment if you literally open up your folder on an NHS computer now, and you create a blank folder called blank folder, which I've just done, and you have VS Code, and you have Git installed on your machine, you can literally go terminal, new terminal, and then you call git clone, and then you find the repository. So I've got the repository here, um, just to show you it. The repository is here, you go code, you click here to copy the, copy the URL of the code, you press this, you copy that in, you run it, there you have all the code that we've uh, pushed up there. You know, so you can download this into your into your trust in about a second. Um, and the, that's the whole point of this is that I want and we want other people to take this and do what they want need to do with it. 
For this part of the project, I split it into two parts. It's generally a better idea to have a separate data cleaning step to an analysis step. So the, uh, the data preparation is basically the same as what Michael just showed, except that it's not, this is currently not a working example. So we need to add in a, you know, the database and things like that. But it's, it, it's a slightly more complex um, script list because there's a few more elements in this one that are not in the other one. Um, so I would start with the the deaf one if you're just learning because that one's a bit easier to sort of understand and Michael's gone through it on the video so it'll be easier to to use but it's basically doing the same thing the output at the end is is a excel file that you could if you're in your trust network you can process it and you can deposit it somewhere in your trust network and anyone can use it you know and you and you can automate it um I, I won't labor how to automate it but the way to do it on a windows machine is to open up a task task scheduler and run a task that runs every day and it will it will output. You don't need your IT team's help to do that. Um, the bit that will cause problems, so the bit that will cause most um, most clinicians or even analysts picking this up problems is connecting to the database. So people, this bit is the bit that causes the trouble. So basically knowing where, where the data is, so you need help from someone in your trust who, who knows where the data is, finding the data and then writing a SQL query that will work for the data. I know. So you've got it, that 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 you do you will need a bit of help with. Um, but once you've got the SQL queries, you can literally plug them into the Python script, create your connection um, string like like we showed on the last example, and you pull the data directly into here. It gets loaded into RAM, and you can analyze it, do whatever you need to do with it, and output the result. And that's exactly what we did with this project. The bit that I want to focus on is the analysis bit because I think this bit um, people underestimate how powerful. Python analysis is. This is a really, really simple example of how you can take quite a lot of data, create a little analysis script, and output some some like quite significant results completely for free. You don't need SPSS. You don't need any licenses. You know, it, it will work straight away. The only packages you need are basically uh, NumPy and Pandas, which we've already talked about. The NumPy enables you to form serial operations on on data, and Pandas enables you to create complex data objects in Python. Date time and math, which are sort of standard Python libraries, SciPy, and in this one we've used Chi Square and Man Whitney U, which are two different types of uh, statistical tests. So Man Whitney U is for continuous data, so numbers, uh, lots of numbers, and Chi Square is for uh, concrete um, uh, uh, categorical data, so noughts and binary noughts and ones. Uh, we haven't used the stats models in this bit, but I'm gonna, I, I, have, I do use that often, and I will add that later on. And then uh, we haven't actually used matplotlib and seaborn yet, either, so you don't need to worry about these yet. Uh, we can comment them out, and they and it doesn't. We don't need them yet, but we will use them in the final version, which isn't quite up yet. I normally then change the settings so that I can see more columns, because there's something that puts new people off when they're doing analysis in um, in their kernel. They're like, "How do I see all the rows?" This is how you do it. You just change the settings, and uh, and then and then you can see them. You don't necessarily need to worry one about change assignment. Um, these are some fun these are really simple functions. Uh, I've written that we've written them out rote in Python so that you understand exactly what they're doing. They're already loaded into lots of Python libraries. You can just use SciPy and use um, scikit-learn libraries to, to do these. But if you want to know what they're doing, they're all here. So this calculates the interquartile range, this calculates the upper and lower bounds, this calculates the standard deviation, this calculates the 95% confidence interval of the mean. This one uh, calculates the 95% confidence interval of the median, which you may sometimes need to do. And this is for estimated cumulative distribution functions. You don't need that for, for this project, but I just thrown it in there anyway. You load the data in. Um, you then um, uh, see, have a look at it, see what's going on. And then in Python and in R, you've got these very, very, very powerful aggregator functions. So what this is doing is it's creating a single data frame which has all the data which you which you could need and uh, aggregates it for Ghibli and it gives you all of those metrics above and then the rest of this script just cleans it up so that you get your p values I'm not going to spend long time on this because we're running out of time and then you get a nice output table so I will now show you the results which um da, 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 da. okay so so this is these are the results oh we've gone to the end so these are the results so once you get your results what you find is if you look if I look at the Ghibli cohort and the non Ghibli cohort what I can see is that the non Ghibli cohort is slightly frailer. So there are there are a few confounders in here, but the mortality rate is substantially different. So the mortality rate is basically half what it what it was in the uh, in the non Ghibli cohort. 
And so uh, and what that tells me is that something significant is going on here. Uh, the p-value is significant. The length of stay is also uh, significantly different. So this GIB liver unit, having more nurses there, having more monitoring, having a specialized process, having better clinical oversight is saving people's lives. That's what this, this, that's what this tells me. And it's not fully explained um, by the logistic regression, uh, which uh, again, I'm not gonna sort of uh, go into at the moment because it'll make it too complicated, but it's not fully explained by anything else. And therefore the trust has now invested a substantial sum of money in continuing this Jibloo thing going. Now, when I was a trainee, I wouldn't have known how to do this. And, I, and therefore I couldn't make these arguments and people didn't and I wouldn't invest. Whereas now I start, well, now we start to know how to do this. And this is what I believe I know all clinicians in the future are gonna have to start engaging with this type of thing, because it allows you to um uh it, it allows you to, to sort of um build up a, a strong case based on data uh, for uh, for making positive changes. And that's it. Um, I can see Mark's question, but I'll, I'll go to, we'll go to questions now because we're running out of time. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening.